to Public Opinion. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Behind the camera is Peter Clayton. And he does a lot more than uh, know how to run a uh, Canon camera in the garage. Uh, maybe we can put that uh, young lady I was talking to or talking about yesterday at the end of the Court of Public Opinion and maybe fit some music in as well. Yes, yes. Why not? Why not? This is a fairly auspicious day. Um, 1989 was the day, or oh, sorry, year, and this was the day, uh, the 12th of March, when the internet was invented. The internet. I cannot imagine one thing that has more revolutionized the world than the internet. Absolutely extraordinary what it has done. I'm sure there are some bad things, but by and large, the man who invented it has passed it on for the people of the world to enjoy. And I guess if he had patented it or, you know, in some other way, tried to monetize it, he could have ended up an extraordinarily wealthy man, but he chose not to. Bless you, sir. Now, speaking of money, we're going to be slugged up to $436 extra each year after the Albanese government approved some of the biggest price increases in years, not announced before the Dunkley by-election, when the approval was given. Oh, no, they waited till just after. This is the increase in health insurance premiums. There goes at least half the benefit of the recent tax cuts. The rest will be gone thanks to the recent hike in alcohol, tobacco and petrol excise, which goes up relentlessly every six months. Health insurance and excise are both under the total control of the federal government. And correct me if I'm wrong, are they not always talking about the problems of the cost of living on the everyday Australian? What a lot of hypocritical nonsense. And this one takes the cake. Tony Burke. Tony Burke. We're going to talk about this at length on Friday, but I'll give you the nub of it now if you haven't heard the basic story. Tony Burke, the champion of the working man and woman, part of this Labour government, who, as I said a moment ago, is always concerned for our cost of living. And I thank the Sydney Telegraph for alerting us here in the Court of Public Opinion to this story. This is truly amazing. The year is 2022, a eh, couple of years ago. And Tony Burke, senior Labour frontbencher and one staffer, spend four days in the United States of America. Travelling, business class, hire cars, accommodation. Now, near as I can figure it from the story, one barbecue lunch and a couple of dinners. $59,000. $820, nearly $60,000, and nothing, as I understand it, to show for it. Not one question asked of him. Where is the opposition? Or are they there with their snouts in the trough as well? It seems he doesn't have to justify a single spent, a single cent of that expenditure. And they profess to be concerned about our cost of living. Now, the Libs could win the next federal election with a commitment to clean up this shocking, hypocritical, wasteful self-indulgence. And as you look at your bills and as you stretch the money out for another few days, remember, remember, Tony Burke's $60,000 four-day American break. 
that we paid for. Truly, truly, ladies and gentlemen, disgraceful. There's a campaign on at the moment, you might see it on free-to-air television, that's where I saw it, to support basically that, free TV. You know, by that I mean the 9, 7, 10s and 2s. Not that 2 is free, I mean 2 is paid for by the taxpayer, they get a billion dollars of taxpayers' money. Now I agree with their campaign, pay TV, if it were to work, if we were moved slowly and painlessly over to paying for our television on a weekly or monthly basis, it would be a financial ba bonanza. Now, I for one don't want to see this. I don't want to come home and have to pay to watch television. You can see what's happening. The big budget, big productions all get done because they're going to be pushed off to the pay channels. The rubbish goes to free to air television. Maybe we just got to turn the thing off for a while. Maybe that's the only way they're going to notice us. I think the alternative stations, and I don't even know what they are, they're sort of seven mate and uh, nine plush and uh, uh, ten bold, and I, I don't know what they are, but they, they, that's where they do all the reruns, and quite frankly the reruns are much more worthwhile watching than the stuff that is current on their mainstream stations. That should cause them to stop and think, but I don't think these people think a lot. Look, here's the truth. The truth. And you don't hear it very often in very many places. But there are, we are talking about television, too many channels. Too many channels now. Too much choice and not enough audience to make financial sense. Nobody gets a big enough slice of the pie to make any financial sense. These people should know this. It's called MAD, MAD. Mutually Assured Destruction. These people are used to making money with this business model, but not in the Australian market with 27 million people. If you've got 340 million people, yeah, I guess you could do that. But these guys in Australia are bleeding cash all over the place. And that's the truth. Don't know what they're going to do. This Trump story gets more and more interesting, particularly in the court of public opinion. A huge financial finding against Trump. This time it was a, a defamation case. Why? Well, it seems because he denies raping this woman, he defamed her. What? What? Isn't that his right to defend himself and to tell the truth as he sees it? Saying I didn't do it is defamation? What's defamatory about saying I didn't do it? Or the other thing he said was, she's not my type. Which clearly she found offensive. Why? Do you, you, you expect to walk through life appealing to everybody? I find all of this fascinating and inexplicable. I was saying last week that the Liberals uh, have to stop being, what did I call it, Labour light. You know, wishy-washy. Be the party that Menzies started. And they've got to be focusing on strategies for the upcoming election. It's not that far away. Please stop trying to please everyone. Don't sit on the fence. Develop good sensible policies and learn how to get them past the media because you can't count on them to help you. And get those policies to the people. Forget about who is a man and who is a woman. Recruit the best candidates with conviction and passion. The political landscape is full of opportunity. When I sit down to think about what I'm going to talk to you every morning here in the Court of Public Opinion, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 
And of course, Friday, uh, around the dining room table, jeremycordo.com. I am amazed at the stuff that's around that we can discuss. There's immigration, taxation reform. And by that I mean uh, reform, I mean uh, less tax, more incentive. Oh. The whole focus should be on intelligent consideration of everything that could make life in Australia cheaper, easier and more competitive. Labour's weaknesses, there are many, but I see their biggest, biggest weakness is their blind adherence to ideology. They figure if you tell a lie often enough, people will believe it. Whether it's renewables or electric cars, vehicle standards, climate change, childcare, superannuation, human rights, oh God, the list goes on, LGBTIQ, Aboriginal everything. They just won't allow any freedom of thought, let alone freedom of speech. You say the wrong thing in that group, cross the floor, in other words, dare to have a different opinion, and you are in big trouble. Indeed, out the door. Here's a vote winner. Government waste. Like $60,000 four-day trips to America for no, no demonstrable purpose or benefit to the country or the taxpayer who footed the bill. Clean out the education system. Get rid of the woke and political correctness. Demand a complete audit of the Aboriginal industry. And, and of course, don't let me forget, the NDIS. The three flags. Get rid of them. One flag. The Australian flag. No more welcome to country. The Libs could develop policies to make people more self-reliant and independent of government interference. In other words, elect us and we'll leave you alone. <laughs> but don't be Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Offer something different and then sell those differences as being a way to advance our way of life and our quality of life. I'd vote for that every, every time. What do you think of the, the Liberals' idea of nuclear power for Australia? Pete, have you got an opinion? We should certainly go nuclear. Yeah. We should at least consider it. Oh. But I've got questions. I mean, how many reactors do we need? How much will it cost? And importantly, when would we expect them to be online or, or commissioned? I, if we go back to basics, I just don't know why conventional generation of power is a problem here. It is obviously a problem in China and India, but if that doesn't stop us sending them our coal to burn, so it can't be a big issue with the government over there. Oh no, they've got a different atmosphere that they're doing it in. <laughs> Do you believe this crap? <laughs> it is not a problem here. In China and India, yes. We don't have 20 years to develop the reactors. That's my basic problem. We do have coal and gas right now. We don't use enough coal and gas in the generating of power for this country for it to be a problem to the environment. That is the truth. We all know through lived experience that the Labour government lied and were totally wrong about renewables which are unreliable and expensive. No one, no one in the world would undertake a move such as this to, to renewables without, and at public expense I underline, without a cost-benefit analysis. The cost of electricity generated by renewables considered beside the benefit. Great cost, limited benefit. It's that simple. And these idiots are running the country. Jeremy, I think it's worth pointing out that Australia is roughly the same size as America. Yeah. We've got 26 million people. 27. 27. Mm. They've got over 300. Yeah. 
we have this huge land mass and what you've been saying for so long we are not the problem we are not the problem we are trying to solve problems that are in existence in other parts of the world and for which we should take the 1.3 percent of responsibility that's simple but we do not disrupt and destroy our economy and uh, put our families in peril financial peril for 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 something that doesn't exist for us i really believe it how much time have i got pete yeah sam kerr sam kerr the global superstar of women's soccer is being labeled a racist it's all very vague and as you know i'm not a sporting guy but what i've gleaned from the stories i've heard it happened some 13 months ago the incident a big night out she threw up in the back of a taxi and then argued with the driver over the fare because uh, he wanted to charge her extra to have the cab cleaned which i would think pretty fair and reasonable she wouldn't pay the police intervened the accusation is that she said that the officer the police officer was a stupid white bastard now whether she did say that or she didn't doesn't it's on matter camera. well the policeman had a, 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 a body cam mm. thing so it, it, we got to say that it'll come out uh, in court in due course but you know the damage has been done to her career her sponsors why she didn't notify people with whom she was involved that this was a, a possible problem prepare them for it in other words i don't know but all this happened 13 months ago they've set aside four days for a trial four days for a trial next year god it should be four minutes look i don't want to become famous for these words but the silly little girl got drunk and should take responsibility for her behavior if it sounds familiar it certainly sounds familiar to me but it's still true haven't haven't we become a precious lot she's going to be tried for a criminal offense it would be oh i don't know what would you say reckless rudeness a misdemeanor at worst storm in a teacup perhaps it's a bit of a problem however i guess that she campaigns very publicly against racism i think she's half indian or half samoan or something and she promotes the lgbtiq rights cause everywhere she can as i think most women footballers do and with her profile with her profile you would have to simply watch everything you said and did you'd be very silly or very drunk to call a policeman a stupid white bastard in public but in all honesty i i guess that in the time between now and next february when the thing is meant to go before a judge the the, the um, charges will be dropped dropped long before next year um the interesting thing for me jeremy was that the premiers of wa and new south wales said yeah. that wasn't racist <laughs> yes i did see that we were talking about it around the table on friday morning okay. you know they said you know that uh calling calling somebody a white bastard is not racist if you called him a black bastard it would be racist which infers that there is something insulting about being black which in itself is, is incredible. Why would these people promote the idea that being black was a problem? Just treat all people the same. For God's sake. Um, oh yes, I mentioned at the beginning of the show the internet was invented on this day in 1989. The foundation stone was laid for the Parliament House in Canberra. That was the old Parliament House, mind you. Uh, the new one doesn't seem to have, I don't know, the soul or something. Something's wrong with the new one. It's too modern. It's all designed to sort of blend into the side of a hill, which I guess is 
modern, but it's certainly not a landmark. It cost a billion dollars to build that. God knows what it would cost today. Probably costs a billion dollars a year to run today, I would think. George Westinghouse died. He was the inventor of the air brake, 1914. The foundation stone for the Parliament House, by the way, was laid in 1923. Dr. Anne Summers was born in 1945. We we're the same age. I remember, I think it was Dr. Anne Summers. I must check that up. I remember she agreed to do an interview with me. Now, perhaps I shouldn't tell you the story till I've checked up on it. But anyway, I'll tell you this story. I'll qualify it later. But um, let's just say a famous feminist, well-known Australian feminist, agreed to do an interview with me, Pete, on 5DN many years ago. And then when we, she came on air, she said, you're a man. And I said, yes. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. Uh, she said, I, I don't talk to men. And I said, well, now I've got you on the line and we've lined you up. And all, uh, you won't, my producer, Anne Forward, um, how about how about I get Anne to come in and do the interview? Would you talk to Would you talk to a woman? Oh yes, I talk to women, but I don't talk to men. Could you imagine what would happen if a man said, "I don't talk to women. Can't can't talk to women. You'd be in serious trouble." And I'll look that up. I'll look that up. Oh, you got me curious. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn the camera off. Oh, they're it. fun times. They're fun times. But I won't slam Ann Summers over it because uh, it, maybe it wasn't her. But I'll check it up. Barry Hall started at 5DN on this day in 1951. Barry's still going. He's well into his 90s. Great musician and great man of radio. Jim Sharman, former artistic director of the Adelaide Festival and original producer of Hair in Australia. For Harry M. Miller was born 1945. Same year. And speaking of the Adelaide Festival, this is the anniversary of, in 1960, the famous Adelaide Festival of Arts was opened. The first one, 1960. Anthony Steele arrived in Australia, 1972. He went on to become a director of subsequent Adelaide Festivals. The um, comic strip Dennis the Menace was published for the first time in America. Uh, 1951, Liza Minnelli was born in California in 1946. Gordon McRae was born in East Orange, New Jersey. 1921, Oklahoma, Carousel, The Desert Song. Great voice, Gordon McRae. Um, world breakthrough in Melbourne on this day in 83. A woman became pregnant by an egg provided by another woman, but the woman miscarried after 10 days. 1983. On this day, it doesn't tell me which woman miscarried. It's very weird and weird and weird. Uh, Winston Churchill was granted an honorary citizenship of the United States of America on this day in 1963. Johnny Young was born in 45. 45 was a good year, Pete. It was. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, James Taylor was born in 1948. Right? 1948, Paul Weston was born. Paul Weston, he was a great man of music. He was born 1920, 20, no, 1912. Paul Weston. He was married to someone famous. I must look that up as well. Paul Weston. Barbara Feldon was born in 1941. General Suharto was sworn in as an acting president of Indonesia after President Sukarno was stripped of authority in 1966. And Ainsley Roberts uh, had a 90, no, 79th birthday on this day in uh, March 12, it was, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for viewing the Court of Public Opinion, ladies and gentlemen. What have you got to 
round up the show with. Oh yes, the young lady who's going to the sound off. The young lady, and I'll find a song. I and have. Harry Joyner, I thank Harry for sending me this. I think this young lady is gifted. Uh, she talks a lot of horse sense. And we'll find a nice piece of music to end the show with as well. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Thank you for viewing the Court of Public Opinion. Peter Clayton behind the camera. Believe in yourself and goodbye for now. I never dreamed that I would have to face the prospect of not living in the United States of America. At least not the one I've known all my life. I've never wished to live anywhere else. This is my home and I was privileged to be born here. But today I woke up and as I had my morning coffee, I realized that everything is about to change. No matter how I vote, no matter what, I say something evil has invaded our nation and our lives are never going to be the same. I've been confused by the hostility of family and friends. I look at people I've known all my life, so hate-filled that they agree with opinions they would never express as their own. I think I may have, well, entered the twilight zone. We've become a nation that has lost its collective mind. You can't justify this insanity. If a guy pretends to be a woman, you're required to pretend with him. Somehow, it's un-American for the census to count how many Americans are in America. Russians influencing our elections are bad, but illegals voting in our elections are good. It was cool for Joe Biden to blackmail the president of Ukraine, but it's an impeachable offense if Donald Trump inquires about it. 20 is too young to drink a beer, but 18 is old enough to vote. People who have never owned slaves should pay slavery reparations to people who have never been slaves. People who have never been to college should pay the debts of college students who took out huge loans for their degrees. Immigrants with tuberculosis and polio are welcome, but you'd better be able to prove your dog is vaccinated. Irish doctors and German engineers who want to immigrate to the U.S. must go through a rigorous vetting process, but any illiterate gangbangers who jump the southern fence are welcome. $5 billion for border security is too expensive, but $1.5 trillion for free health care is not. If you cheat to get into college, you go to prison, but if you cheat to get into the country, you go to college for free. People who say there is no such thing as gender are demanding a female president. We see other countries going socialist and collapsing, but it seems like a great plan to us. Some people are held responsible for things that happened before they were born, and other people are not held responsible for what they're doing right now. Criminals are caught and released to hurt more people, but stopping them is bad because it's a violation of their rights. And pointing out all this hypocrisy somehow makes us racist. Nothing makes sense anymore. No values, no morals, and no civility. People are dying of a Chinese virus, but it's racist to refer to it as Chinese even though it began in China. We're clearly living in an upside down world where right is wrong and wrong is right, where moral is immoral and immoral is moral, where good is evil and evil is good, where killing murderers is wrong but killing unborn babies is A-OK. -okay. Wake up America, the great unsinkable ship, Titanic America, has hit an iceberg, is taking on water, and is sinking fast. Speak up. <laughs>
Sweetest gift of mine.